All right, this is Firemind, and today we are going to have a look at how to dodge, how to make a first person player dodge. So you can dodge from left to right or from front to back, however you want, just by pr double pressing a key. Now, don't be afraid because this tutorial is quite long. You can, if you want, only take a second because I have uploaded all the code that you need and for this tutorial it is only code that you need. And you can pretty much just copy paste it onto your first person rigid body controller. So if you want to do that, go ahead and go over to firemindacademy.net and just copy the code from there. I will have more details about that right after the intro. Uh, however, spoiler alert, this tutorial is not very beginner friendly there's quite a lot of code involved um, and i'm just gonna take you through the code after this intro so if you're interested in coding and how i achieve this effect please stay tuned otherwise just copy the code from my website and feel good all right All right, so let's switch over to the code. But So I'm using the FPS controller, which is a something something from the standard assets. Uh, yeah, you get that basic controller from the standard assets. And I have the whole controller uploaded on my site with the enhancement that I made. So let's look at them. Okay, so we start off by, or I started off by creating a a uh, new boolean which actually checks or is, is used to check if a dodge is actually possible. But let's start with the key things that we need to uh, initialize. So I initialized it in a way that I want to dodge or make the dodge movement whenever I press a key twice and that fast. So if I hit left twice and twice fast, I wanted to dodge. So let's check out how we recognizes a double tap on a key. Um, so I actually build a function called check double tap and inside check double tap you can you can see that I'm check I'm get, I'm giving it a key and then I'm checking if that key is pressed and if it has been pressed before. If it hasn't, which is the case when you uh, call this function the first time, it goes down here and checks if the key is pressed and if the the pressed key is not uh, is not the same one as before. Then you go in here, set set the key that you pressed the last uh, press or first pressed key, set the time when it was pressed, and then just return a false to wherever you check if that was a double tap because it isn't, so you can return false. So the next time you come in here you now have the first button pressed, which like for instance would be an A, and you see, okay, it's the same that was pressed before, and it is pressed now, so let's go inside of here, then assign it some random code, uh, like I, I used O, um, probably want to assign null or something here, but I'm just gonna use zero, uh, the O code for now, and with that, uh, this one is now something that will never be pressed in a regular gaming basis, and then it checks if the time that has passed since the first button was pressed is small enough. And if so, let's return true. So with this function, I can check if a key was double tapped. And I'm doing this up here. As you can see, like here we had the the jump, like where it's asking if the jump button was pressed. And here we are checking if like a kind of same kind of manner we're checking if the double tap was pressed. Also, we're checking if dodge is possible. Like I said it in a way that if you're jumping, you can only dodge once. So otherwise you would be able to like fly. So um, yeah, that is said as well. Now, if that double tap is actually working, we're gonna go into our dodge function. We don't need extra functions for like each direction. We're just gonna do that in one function and we're gonna pass it the key code. So let's go to that dodge function itself. All right, and in that dodge function is uh, we are we are getting the force that we can set in our editor. So if we actually look at this, we have the dodge force in here. I've set it to four hundred, and you you know you can change that if you want. If the dodge is not fast or slow enough for you, 
then if you are jumping while you're attempting to do the dodge, you're actually gonna divide the force by five. Otherwise, you're just gonna like fly away because the the drag on your rigid body is different to when you're in the air to when you're on the ground. So that's why I divided it by five. And this means the force, this force will then be applied to the direction that you want to go. Now here's one of the the main pieces that are maybe a little bit that are actually like quite enhanced. Um, you want to find the vector. So the vector, um, like going left or right, is always described by a vector, and you can find that vector by doing some well simple math operations. So I'm checking which direction I want to go. If you actually want to dodge forward, I'm just going to transform the forward vector. Pretty simple. If I want to go backward, I'm just going to invert that vector and return it. And now the tricky ones, if you want to go left or right. So there's this simple math equation, I guess, that you can take the up vector and then uh, take the the cross product of the normalized up vector uh, and the normalized forward vector to then get the left vector. <laughs> now that's a lot of math, I know, but uh, deal with it. <laughs> you get all this code for free, so... What are you complaining about? No. And if the key code is to the left, we're going to return the left vector. If all of the above are not the case and we haven't returned before, there's only the right one left. So the inverted one of the left one is the right one. So that's how we get the vector in which direction we're then going to gonna move. And we have this direction vector here. And with this direction vector, we can... Uh, then apply the add force to it. So this is basically the same or kind of the same as we had in the um, in the normal jump function, which is standard in the rigid body first person. Yeah, so that's very standardish. I don't know what to tell you about this. We're just basically applying force to the rigid body and then I'm moving it up a little bit and then applying it uh, the force in the direction of the vector that we just described. And then also I'm setting the dodge possible to false because I only want this to be true again after I hit the ground. So I think somewhere. So once I hit the ground, once I realize that I'm grounded again, I'm setting this to true. And actually that's it. That's all I, I can I can tell you about this code now. I realize that this is probably hard to recomprehend if you have not been exposed to much code before. But I guess this is not really a tutorial for people that are shy of coding and also yeah I, i'm guessing i'm kind of new to this code review stuff so if you have questions please ask me in the comments down below and if you want to see more tutorials you can subscribe and yeah i hope this script works for you and uh, helps you with your game if you have any other requests for tutorials can't find the tutorial you are looking for well just ask for it then just go to tutorial-request.com and check out if other people are searching for the same tutorial as you do. If you find a matching request, make sure to leave it a like, so other creators always know what's in demand. And if you can't find a request that you are looking for, just create a new one. Simply click on New Request, then choose a Title, Topic and Description for your request and simply click on Make Request and you're done. It's that easy. And with your request, you help creators know what's in demand. So go over to tutorial-request.com and sign up today. It's free.